There we are. How are we doing? Good evening, one and all. Two. Two two and all. Yeah, um, I figured we'd start uh, a couple minutes early in case uh, anyone jumps in and thinks we're running behind. Because I've noticed that some people do join early and then end up leaving because they think that uh, it's just our intro screen. So, well, we got about two minutes. We'll just sit around. I know, I've got nothing to do. I'll sip on my tea. Well, if I knew that, I would, I would have prepared us uh, something like a DJ or like a board in the law block. A, a DJ. Well, yeah, yeah. okay. Um, but you're sure that the sound is all good? Because I can't see. Yeah, yeah, the sound's good. Sound's on. That's another reason we should start early, too. Make sure the sound's actually working. That's true. And yeah. it's recording. It's actually working. That's nice, too. Right. Um, well, let's see. I don't have any pickups this week, I don't think. Um, I got mail call stuff. I'm going to save it for the show. Yeah. All right. Well, let's see. Um, let's start off and... Uh, uh, I don't have nine, 8 o'clock yet. It's 7.59. You got to wait. Oh, okay. That would be exact. That would be precise. Um, well, we talked about the show last week, and that went pretty well. We had a good time. We did, yeah. That's that, uh, I, got, like I picked thank, up a couple things there. Maybe I'll grab those. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'd like to thank everybody that came out to the show we were at last weekend uh, in Winnipeg there. It was uh, the Garden City uh, can Ed ins There was quite a lot of people there. I was very surprised. Uh, Pleasant seat. It was, it was very packed considering we were in the middle of, uh, well, a worse storm than we had during the storm of the century. Yeah, it was another blizzard, and uh, lucky us, we're expecting another storm tomorrow. So I, I was very well behaved, uh, and Tyler helped me keep that way. I didn't buy anything. So Yeah, <laughs> I the money nice stayed piece. in my pocket. Yeah, I wanted to pick up a nice piece. It was uh, a cover, the original cover art for uh, an Archie book. Mm -hmm. That was kind of cool, too. And, and the Archie and get the issue. Yep. Yeah, and he also, too, had uh, Sad Sack. And the same thing as well too. So buy and buy nothing is uh well we kept those profits. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. what we can call it. I don't yeah. know if we can call it profits just yet. No. Uh I picked up yeah. a couple things from my my new drug dealers. Um their buddy Trevor over at uh uh was uh Night Crusaders? Toy Crusaders, yes. I kept thinking Night Crusaders, but yeah. uh, I was at game night earlier this week. Uh Picked myself up a Star Wars 501st Clone Trooper. Where are we? It's somewhere around there. And this is one I wasn't planning on picking up. And I kept not picking it up all day. And just last minute before we left from Pig City Toys. A uh, droids. Just like some of the retro Spider-Man stuff I have. I'm a sucker for this. Um, there's an R2-D2 and a Boba Fett coming as well. I don't care too much for the Boba Fett. But the R2 should be neat. That uh, droids one is identical to the original packaging. We looked it up. The, the packaging, it comes with the stupid little coins that all of them came with, and yeah. the actual figure is probably the most accurate reproduction figure I've ever seen. Like, down to the colors with their mismatched plastic parts and everything. It, maybe they are the original ones, because nobody bought those ones back then. No, right? no, the other ones are more like the, the Kenner ones. It's, it's surprising that they even had multiple colors, to be honest. <laughs> Very true. All right, now we're two minutes over. Is that good? That's normal. Okay. Okay, so we can start off with, uh, you know, welcome to the show, everybody, our weekly roundup, Not Daddy Collectibles. Usual roundup here, nothing too groundbreaking, just a, a bunch of comic and pop culture news. Uh, a lot of shotgun news lately because a lot of announcements mm -hmm. and stuff, but not a whole lot of, like, you know, info and details. No, no, no meat to these stories, as they say in, in the journalism gig. <laughs> uh, and also, uh, we got our weekly reviews. You know, we got picked out a few good books. There was a ton of books this week. Probably one of the the bigger and better uh, pull weeks of uh, 2022 so far. I've heard that from a, a few different people, yeah. review wise. Uh, so we grab what we could from there. And uh, let's get started, Tyler. How about you start off by thanking some of our uh, common community that we're uh, our friends and lucky to be a part of. 
Yeah, we'll start off with 204 Comics, uh, you know, Ashley and Bobby. Uh, Bobby wasn't there today, at least not when I was there. Nope, neither. The day off today. Yeah, so, uh, no, I was in there, I picked up my books, and uh, I think I've got two covers of the week, actually, for this week, um, brought to you from 204 Comics. So once we go over those books there, I'll uh, I'll show them off. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's about it for 204. Um, they seem to be having a bit of... Uh, uh, structural integrity problem that they're building at the moment. I walked in there, I asked if they were doing renovations, and uh, not the case. Yeah, I saw that too. Uh, the wall, because of the crazy winter we've had, the ground's doing some up and down issues. So, mm -hmm. the one nice thing is, though, is uh, there's issues with the wall at the moment, but the door is opening and closing good now. So, <laughs> kind of balances out there. So. All right. Let's uh, thank our uh, friends at Big Country. We got Justin and them out there. Uh, Finally able to release their uh, last Ronin 5 this week. Yeah, and also, too, the, uh, they just announced the um, new one for Undiscovered Country. Yeah. Sean Hill doing the cover on there, and he killed that one, too. His last two ones have been awesome. And we got the Things Are Getting Sketchy group. There was supposed to be a Things Are Getting Sketchy uh, show this weekend. Uh, but due to uh, you know, travel issues, some people are at the uh, Cleveland Comic Con, uh, and um, uh, Wi-Fi issues apparently are not working well. I would assume in the Wi-Fi in the hotel is pretty crappy. Mm -hmm. So I guess if they canceled that, so that's all right, uh, unfortunately. But one thing I will mention that is uh, something that's kind of spinning off from the things that are getting sketchy that we're going to be involved with is something called Things Are Getting Dicey. And that's, uh, we kind of mentioned that a week or so ago. Uh, we're going to be involved with uh, the same you know, group of people from the Things Are Getting Sketchy group, uh, a lot of them. And they're going to be having a D and d game. And uh, I'll be running them. I'll be, I'll be your DM there. So I'm a pretty funny DM, um, or at least like to think so. I uh, say so you definitely like to think so, yeah. Well, I guess they wouldn't ask. So I know I wouldn't be allowed to do it if I wasn't funny in that. So uh, we'll see how that um, goes too, but... Yeah, and I think that's it, really. Oh, if yeah. you want, we could, we could talk about our stuff. Uh, I'd be save, we'll save, we'll save all that for the end. I've got stuff pulled up for it already. Okay. Um, yeah, see, you mentioned the Warner Bros. and Discovery merger. Um, that is something that I had mentioned forever ago, and apparently no one else had heard about, which I, I thought it was being talked about a lot. But yeah, we, we, have, we have some movie and TV stuff to talk about later on. That's definitely one of them. Sure. Um, let's just jump into the thick of it, you know, our bread and butter here. Um, our first issue we've got up is uh, the very first issue of a new character, uh, a brand new character. There was someone like him back in, I think, 63-ish, um, but yeah, they bring this character back. He's a huge guy. Uh, it, it's Spider-Man uh, with the amazing Spider-Man number one. Um, yeah, it's interesting that they're bringing this character back after all these years. Issue 895 in the legacy experience. So <laughs> this one itself is, a, you know, an expensive issue because it's, again, starting off a new issue. And you know for a fact that in, in five or four more issues, they're going to have another giant size issue because they're going to say it's issue 900. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Marvel is so bad for doing that. But um, at least the, the paper quality on this one's a little bit better. We, they've had so many complaints in the last month or so. It, about it actually, months. yeah, it was decent. Yeah, so, you know, that's all right. But, I mean, this book is a $10 book almost. So, I mean, that you got to expect that. Uh, uh, I six? Think I, I, I think I saw there's about eight covers for it. So oh, every, every there is, like, possible. 53 variants or something for it. Oh, well, yeah, I guess there's probably a lot of uh, exclusives oh, for yeah. it. Yeah. So, I mean, that's got to, I mean, it's nice for all that. But what it is is you got uh, Zeb Wells doing the writing, and he was doing writing in, in some of the earlier uh, volumes and storylines there recently. And the big part of this is you got John Ramuda, uh Jr. back doing the art. Mm -hmm. So that's what's going to sell it for most people. Uh, that's the cover you see. His, on his Marvel Ages cover is, I think, the 1 in 100 variant. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, probably. 1 in 100 or 1 in 50, but yeah. Most likely, 1 in the 2. And uh, so, good. Yeah, I will see how it goes. I, I, the first issue I read it, I, I enjoyed it. It kind of jumps off, and you don't know where it's taking place, like in in time wise, exactly. It's you don't know if it's picking up from the last story or if it's you know, quite a bit in the future. But you know, Spidey's kind of an ass now. He's kind of a jerk. He's 
he seems to have burned all his friends and family somehow, and they don't really mention it, but they kind of know, um, you know, kind of refer to it a little bit. Mm -hmm. He also seems to be all kind of washed up, you know, financially and job wise. He keeps skipping you no know, job interviews and you know, not wanting to be a hero and just kind of walking around in days. Apparently, MJ and him have had some kind of big falling out, and he keeps trying to, you know, buck, getting back with her. Which is surprising that they've done that because they just went back and fixed all that one more day stuff. Right. So I thought it was just one more thing like that. And then the end, at the end of the story, you see that MJ actually has kids, two kids with somebody else. So I'm, I'm hoping, yeah. or I'm assuming those are adopted kids with this new guy. Um, it, it turns out there's going to be a gang war going on. And I quite like that aspect because in the old eighties, there was a quite a good gang war crossover that went five or six issues that involved all these same gangs like uh, Hammerhead and uh, Tombstone. Well, not Tombstone back then, but Hammerhead and, and uh, the Rose and Kingpin and that when they were all trying to take over the, from the, when the Kingpin had left. So that's kind of cool as well. Um, it's cool to see Spidey kind of get, um, you know, have a, a mission to go up against uh, Tombstone now because Tombstone seems to think he's the reason for all his problems. Uh, I don't really care for the way Tombstone is drawn here. I kind of have the same issue that a lot of people are saying. He looks way too similar to like Chameleon. He doesn't have like a, a rocky look to his face, which he should because that's why it's called Tombstone. Like not Tombstone in the sense where he looks like Bizarro, but he looks way too smooth here like Chameleon there. Um, yeah, otherwise than that, we'll see where it goes. I'm trying to pull up a picture of him. There he is. He's too smooth. And that, that's one of the pictures where he actually looks a little bit more block-like. So yeah. Other pictures, he straight up looks like a soft little skull. So we'll see, we'll see where it goes. I just don't know why, like what he did to you know, make everything so bad and negative in his life. Like even Aunt May, she's like living in a crappy little apartment and says, oh, don't worry, Peter. You know, I'm okay, I'm okay, even though you screwed up, and I don't, I still love you, even though I shouldn't trust you and stuff. Like, apparently, you did something really bad. But who knows? It's probably for the greater good at some point. It's probably something to do some stupid spider verse crap. Maybe let's hope not, though. So we'll see. But, uh, yeah, and, and like C said, it is a good creative team on it. So this, hopefully, it's good. Um, incidentally, one of my covers of the week is for this, and you know how I've become quite weak lately when it comes to Scotty Young stuff. I've got the Scotty Young. I love the all black on it. It's I was going to say that being all black, that is a nice cover. Uh, the yeah. red really pops on it. And if you sent that in to get a Scotty Young signature, that was a great or white with silver. Right. And just to top it all off, <laughs> it's got Obi-Wan on the back. So, I mean, best of both worlds. That's awesome. Um, next up, we've got, uh, Punisher, also from Marvel. Uh, a bit of a controversial issue. Well, although this whole series has been so far. I guess so, but I think this one's a little bit tougher for people to swallow than a change in his symbol or his logo. But what is the controversial part you're going to talk about? Um, he's getting superpowers. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if it's controversial. It's just kind of weird. Uh, so you got Jason Aaron, uh, Jesus says, and Paula uh, Azacata doing the writing, which is a lot of people there. You think just Jason uh, Aaron could handle it, but <clears throat> whatever. And you got Dave Stewart doing the art. Art's awesome in here still. Uh, really, really clean lines. Uh, it's still the same story. Issue number two is continuing off where Punisher's working for the hand now. It's kind of their, their main killer. He's their... Um, He's kind of made a deal with them where they brought back his dead wife. And, and in this issue, they kind of hint that maybe they'll bring back his dead children as well. Because uh, they were all killed during the mob war. Um, but now Frank seems to be evolving. Like Tyler mentioned, he seems to be, now that he's passed all these tests with the hand, he's kind of be, you know, evolved to be like their supreme leader type of thing. Mm -hmm. And now he's getting like these, no, I won't say superpowers because you know, he's not flying around and stuff, but he is getting like like these enhanced, almost like supernatural powers. See, he well, says he's, he's Frankenstein again. Or is he Frankenstein again? He's, no, he's not Frankenstein, but it kind of seems like he's like demon-possessed kind of thing. He almost has uh, powers like that. And at one point in the book, the, some of the hand members, the higher-ups... Not unlike Elektra, when she becomes enhanced because of doing shit with the, the clan. Uh, yeah, but not as much as this. And then at one point in the book, the higher-ups there, they take him to meet like the, the, the god that the hands all uh, 
prey to and it's like this just big giant gross like um uh, you know uh lovecraftian no torture god pretty horrific scene there he's got like uh people hanging on chains and hooks behind him like hellraiser and that so um we'll see what happens there we'll keep going like how uh the, the punisher seems to kind of be evolving into this you know, almost like a you know god type of person for the hand but at, at what cost so at, at the moment he's only killing bad people and with that no that but he's still being you know pointed by the hand so mm-hmm. and again bringing back these um these these dead people how healthy is that as well too for your psyche and in this issue too they also go back into like some of his the old frank castles himself as growing up they show him as like a 12 and 13 or 14 year old yeah but again you know they're showing him that he was a psycho back then too you know hurting people and that came from a broken household so I don't know. Again, it does kind of you know, tweak on the origin story a little bit. So, yeah, um, Punisher is not a character that I'm ever overly fond of. I think he's a good character for sure, but not one that I actively follow. Um, yeah, and Dave Tyndall is saying too, like Punisher is great and it's great art, but not sure about the superpowers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got my uh, my phone next to me so I can see the comments this time too. And oh, okay. As I was saying about the origin, they kind of tweak the origin there a little bit. So. Mm-hmm. Um, next we don't up, know this is for sure, like um, like in Marvel canon, even <clears throat> really. That's true. We don't we don't know if it's something happening in the true Marvel universe, a six one six. Right. Um, next up is we don't really typically cover a whole lot of. X Men and uh, even more so spin offs. Uh, this so, book is one of the reasons why. Yeah, and it's Knights of <laughs> X. It, it, mm, uh? Yeah, I didn't like it. Um, it's shitty Excalibur. Yeah, well, that's what it is. It's trying to, <clears throat> pardon me, it's trying to expand out of there. Yeah. It's by Teeny Howard and by Bob Quinn, and Teeny Howard was doing the Excalibur, I believe. And this is all continuing off from like the the current X Men stuff, which I have not liked in a long time. I don't like any of the the Hickman stuff. I find it just too complex. Not like in a. But they a were smart, quite just, popular. I know lots of people, people have like actually it. enjoyed. Like Scott, Scott mm-hmm. has really liked Hickman's X Men run. Yeah, that's true. Some people like it, and other people don't. But what it is now? It's it's going to be a uh, a crossover story. There's I don't know how many issues. I was doing ten because there's a House of X. So it's Betsy Braddock, you know, she's continuing on her her uh, gathering of people to become the, these Knights of X. Mm-hmm. And uh, there is good art. It's nice and clean and sharp, but I, I just don't care for it. And again, there's there's too much of that uh, that X-Men stuff that's currently going on that I just don't care for, especially some of the characters in that. Um, I don't like any of the, um, how they have all that, like, uh, how you don't like stuff in, like, Trump Department of Truth, all those exposition pages yeah. with the weird art. I hate them in this stuff. Mm-hmm. So it's just, just that's just my opinion. I, I tried it. I I wanted to make sure that we covered it for the show, but again, I didn't care for it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for myself personally, I I don't know what it is about X Men. I I don't mind the original X Men comics. Like I have Volume One Omnibus behind me, and that I've I've enjoyed. But stuff beyond that, and even like beyond Giant Size, like that era, I don't enjoy it unless it's like. Uh, like the the shows, all the X Men shows are fantastic. Uh, even the movies, even for even for the poor ones, they're still good. They're, but something about X Men comics, they just spin out so many things, and it's just almost like Sony with all these weird Spider Man spin offs they're doing. It just feels so unnecessary. It all just feels so, ugh. Yeah, I, I guess I'm the same way too. I, I'm just the original X Men type of guy, and anything related to that. Um, but I yeah, I just don't care for these ones. But I, I gave it a shot. It has very nice art. Mm-hmm. Um, next, I know you haven't read this one, so we'll go over it quickly. Um, oh, where's my banner? There we are. Uh, Crimson Rain, number four. And next issue is the final issue in this, which is... So this is the Pentapula issue or whatever it is. Or... An ultimate, yeah. Um, it's a good issue, though, this one. Uh, we're following the Knights of Ren who, you know, we were introduced to the Knights of Ren with Kylo Ren back in The Force Awakens, you know, when that came back, when Disney restarted Star Wars. Um, 
And then they showed up in comics during a Kylo Ren comic. They bumped into Luke and Kylo. And they I don't think they've really ever been fully explored. So this is like their first um, chronological appearance, I guess. Where they're kind of at their lowest point. They're just, they seem like they're just uh, raiders going around not with much of a purpose. They're trying to reclaim who the Knights of Ren were. And Kira from the Crimson Dawn, right, from Solo, uh, sort of recruits them and says, hey, go steal something for me out of Vader's vault on Mustafar and out of his castle. And they're like, shit, yeah, let's go for it. And by the end of it, uh, they're caught by Vader, and one of them is killed it's pretty graphically for a Star Wars comic. Um, he, like, crushed into a ball. Like, uh, he, not human, but humanoid, not a robot crushed into a ball and you see it and you see them just crumpled up on the ground after like a tin can it is quite no blood or anything but quite graphic and i was that was like you don't even see that kind of stuff in the vader comics i was quite impressed um but I, I, overall a decent issue uh i wouldn't mind seeing a, a limited run a limited run of the knights of ren themselves Oh, it wouldn't surprise me if they got one. Yeah. You know, we have stuff to talk about later on in our rapid news stuff there about some new Star Wars properties that they've announced for us. So. Mm-hmm. Um, that's it for Marvel. Up next, we've got DC. Just a couple from DC, right? Just, Two, just, right? just a couple, yeah. Um, this one, So I don't think we really cover very much Justice League stuff at all. Um, but this one is actually quite huge to the DC universe, and that's because it's the death of the Justice League, right? It's leading into the next crisis event. Yeah, dark crisis. So, and I, we've seen stuff before, you know, many times where people get killed and you know, they're brought back, and whether they're brought back by you know, you know, really even the dead, or they were sent to other dimensions, or you know, time warping or whatever. So it's not a big, big deal. Mm -hmm. But they are kind of hyping this up, and I did read the issue, and yeah, the Justice League does get killed in here. So, I mean, it's, yeah, that is kind of uh, surprising, and we'll see if they actually stay killed. Or but, not. yeah, exactly. Is it our Justice League? Is you know, Are they going to reboot everything after? I don't follow yeah. DC News as much as I do mm -hmm. Marvel, so I don't know what is meant to come of this crisis. Exactly. So we're not sure. That's why I was curious about it. But I did enjoy this so far. Uh, Joshua Williamson did the writing, and he actually does the writing on the other DC book that we're covering this month. So he's a great writer. I enjoy his stuff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's kind of oh, cool. That, that's something I forgot to mention with Star Wars, is that Charles Sewell is the writer on it. And I, he writes damn near every Star Wars book. That guy's a busy dude. Yeah, he does write up uh, quite a bit, if not uh, most of the Star Wars stuff. But I think he might even be the one that like kind of plans it out or helps plan it out, like the main he's, writer. But... Yeah, he's definitely one of their. Uh, yeah, he does. A, he's done multi, uh, not the current volume, I don't think, or maybe it is, but that or earlier volumes of Darth Vader. So, mm -hmm. um, yes, yeah, so with just again, uh, you got Rafa uh, Sandoval doing the art here. Again, great artwork, and that Sandoval is a great artist. Uh, so Dark Crisis is coming. They, they kind of hype this up. You got Justice League members. They're kind of blipped from their respective lives at the moment, and they're all taken to um, a satellite kind of type of thing. And I don't know um, exactly what – I forget what the name of this place is, but it's kind of like the, the, the Justice League incarnates uh, base. And um, it's kind of at the edge of Cosmos where they protect everything. So they're all brought there and told what's going on, how this is dark energy that's kind of taken over everything. It, they're building this massive army, and then the army kind of attacks. And I see this army is, has like a, you know, a legion of doom type of thing of their own, but it's like an army of darkness. And it has people like Dark Sides on it, and um, Pariah is the, is the leader of it, and a lot of other heavyweights too. I can't remember off the top of my head. And uh, but they're all being controlled by like this dark power, so you can see that it's like, you no, know, they're they're, they're being used, but they're not being used, you know, willingly or freely. So they're they're kind of being used at like they're eighty or seventy percent effective because there is a little bit of resistance there. Mm -hmm. But during this fight, the Justice League does all get killed, and uh, we'll see what goes from there. So it, it's kind of. Um, yeah, interesting. I was going to see the pride guy wants to you know wipe out everybody, you know, just kind of you know, wipe out everything darkness wise. We've seen similar stories like this. He was the guy that was in the first crisis. Well, I was going to say, Pariah is the one that was the first crisis, yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. They had him in the uh, CW's Infinite Crisis, or the Crisis on Infinite Earths. Yeah, um, he was a version it, it, of Harrison Wells. Yeah, he's it's his machine that spews out all the darkness that like, like, consumes everything and turns it in that. So yeah, yeah. So we'll see where this goes. Um, uh, Dave like says, uh, "What about Constantine inside of uh, Spectre?" That kind of was neat too. And uh, Spectre shows up again at the end as the the last big heavy heater, and again Constantine's inside it. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, kind of cool. We'll see. Constantine was also announced like, this week, too. They're going to have shows and that going on. And it sounds like they're going to have a black actor doing that. So I heard that. I don't mind. It doesn't matter to me. Yeah. Um, next up, it's kind of funny. We go from the Justice League now to sort of their antithesis. Um, and that's uh, Rogues, which is uh, another issue, too. Uh, quite a few issue twos we've had. Um, this one, this is a pretty good series, actually. Like yeah, it it, it genuinely it. is. Yeah, this one's done by DC uh, Black Label, yep. so it's premium a format. More mature, uh, so a little bit more mature reading, a little bit more mature uh, characters here, not just like mature in the sense like um, you know, um, you know, reading kids to adult. I mean, mature in the sense that these are older versions of mm-hmm. the of the characters. Mm-hmm. It's about ten years since the the rogues, like the uh, most of the rogues from the Flash, you know, villains have pulled a, a heist, they've gone straight, you know, and doing their probation and all their rehabbing and stuff. And they decided to pull up one last caper again, kind of like Ocean's Eleven style. So a bunch of them have gathered together. They're going to decide to, you know, rob Gorilla Grodd and all the gold in uh, Gorilla City, this fabled city with this fabled treasure and that. So in the first issue, they kind of got together. Which is weird, because I would consider Grodd one of the rogues. At one point, that's how they know about this. They, yeah. they, you know, they heard him talk about it in that. Because the robes were kind of like Justice League, kind of interchangeable in that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so some of them are all head out to Africa with Captain Cold kind of you no know, leading this, you know, this rogue team to steal it. And they get there, they find the, uh, you know, the the hidden city in Africa, they find the entrance, they get in there, and they see that Gorilla City is not like it once was. It isn't just like this, you know, advanced temple city. It's now, it's like a, almost like a, a New York slash Las Vegas style type type of gorilla city where it's all you know lights and stuff like that. The the apes have all turned into like gangster styles. They're all dressed up like that. So they, they find that uh, they kind of wander around. They they kind of think there is the vault. They end up getting found out by some garage and stuff. So that shows up at the end of this book. Continues on from there. But kind of slapstick, not slapstick funny, but some you no know, good dark humor in there. A little bit more adult in that. Um, I enjoyed it. The art's really good. It's by Leo Max, and that, that's one word. It's not two words. It's not Leo Max. It's Leo Max. Um, I'm liking it. I, I can't wait to see uh, the next issue and see how this you know, kind of caper heist continues. Yeah, um, that's all we've got for DC. And I feel like we always sort of give DC the cold shoulder, but... No, it's just whatever comes out is I like here we have a bunch of number twos because some of the number ones aren't worth reviewing. Exactly. And um, you know, these number twos are. Like I really that Justice League one's a big event. Mm-hmm. And I enjoyed it. And the Rogues one, I enjoyed the first one, and the second one was just as good too. Mm-hmm. Oh, and so one thing I should also mention is this Rogues one is also one of those larger magazine style formats that yeah. I know some people aren't a fan of, but no, we. Well, aren't. that's something we've talked about personally too, with Spectro coming, be you know, big premium size. Um, mm-hmm. It's it's even tough to get bags and boards that size because they don't quite fit magazine size. Um, yeah, I didn't even mean to drop it like that. Um, I know, it but uh, even storing them, them are, like <laughs> I've been trying to think what we can because we're getting a sizable amount of them. How are you going to store them? They won't fit in a regular long box, but I wonder if in the magazine style or even in the CGC box, if it's just wide enough, it something you have to look at. It will be a little unfortunate. Tough for collectors to store. To store. Even getting bags and boards is a little unfortunate at first, but I mean, it's hard to get bags and boards just in general in the last you know, six months to a year with everything. So that's not a big deal. And I find that so many of these books are becoming, you know, these kind of formats. Mm-hmm. And formats are similar to that size, not quite that size, but just larger uh, magazine size. Because it yeah. does, it is costing you a little bit more. Mm-hmm. But when a comic is costing you eight ninety nine, ten ninety nine for a bigger, larger format, isn't a big deal, really. Yeah. If it gives you a better canvas to look at. You know, so and then that's kind of one of the reasons why we did our spectrum. We like we like that book because of the larger artwork on it. So 
Yeah, and that's that's exactly what Dave's saying here too. That that's exactly what Dave is saying here too. Like this book in particular is the one that's pulled him back into that magazine size format. It was like early stuff. You had your Conan, your Punisher, like you know, uh, and I think even Vampire Rouse started like that, um, or if not started, but had uh, magazine format. So th those are all exactly like that. Like it's bringing back and sort of reintroducing people to that format because some of these artists just get to go crazy, not even just on the covers, but on the interiors as well. Well, there's a few of them who even started their own magazines. Like Tinian has his own magazine. Mm -hmm. It's called the uh, Razor Blades. And some of them, you know, have started their own. I think Jim Starling started one. Um, I don't have it down in the news section here because I forgot it, but I just got reminded. Frank Miller has started up a, a single publication now, right. announced today or yesterday, where he's going to be doing not just new stuff, but new adventures of existing characters, like his Ronin characters and his characters from Sin City. That's a big deal. That, no, when's the last time Sin City had new material? Yep. Um, next, we've got... Uh, he's dropping bombs all over the place here tonight. Right. Uh, another larger size book, and one that has been coming for what seems like months. I feel like this was supposed to come out like October. Is this Last Ronin? Last Ronin 5. The last, oh, last Ronin. This Last Ronin series has been a great series, but you know, unfortunately with the way it was uh, published and uh, distributed, it lost so much momentum yeah. in every issue because of that. But otherwise... Well, yeah, it's, it's been, been what, three series? months since the fourth issue? Two months? Oh, well, there, there was at least two to three months between every issue. Yeah. Not the first mention, or mention the first time the first issue got pushed back. They decided to redesign it. They yeah, after the Ash Camp, issue. yeah. But, a great book. Again, another one of those larger formats. Um, every book has been pretty awesome. Like, there's every book has had a little bit of you know, interesting, oh, oh my God, moments in it, seeing what's happened in the future. Mm -hmm. you know, who's survived, who hasn't, who's changed being in the future and that. Um, I loved it. Um, yeah, I loved it. IDW is one of their few properties that they still have left with the Ninja Turtles. Um, who lives? Who dies? I don't want to give too many spoilers or any spoilers, really. You know, who survives the, the final battle between um, the confrontation between, you know, Mikey and, and you know, the, the, the Shredder, who is like, kind of the Shredder at this point. And uh, you know, does this whole universe kind of continue on at the end of this? Or is it just uh, the story ends, per se? Is it, can we see a future in that there? And all these questions do get answered. Um, there is some sad moments in here, you know, especially if you're, you know, our original, like a Turtles fan in that. And obviously, you know, I mean, called The Last Ronin throughout this whole book, there's been that's, sad That's something this series has done is um, I, I sort of tugged at heartstrings, like seeing what's happened to people's favorite characters and even sure. characters they're not a fan of, just seeing where they've ended up. And sure. it, it's been good. It's not been a cash grab or anything. This is, this is a story that they were working on years and years and years ago and have just now decided to, well, I guess two years ago when they announced <laughs> it, uh, started working on. Yeah, it's great. I, I enjoyed it all. I wasn't disappointed. Um, I, I saw that they have announced that they have the book coming out in a hardcover format in the fall, so that's pretty cool too. And uh, we still have copies of the uh, the director's cut. So if anybody mm -hmm. wants to get a director's cut, that's really cool. We can't uh, have many of those a, left. They're only $15, so that's pretty cool. We can't yeah, have too many of those left. We, we had awesome. a bunch, and I thought they were all gone. Uh, no, I, I was cleaning up on the weekend and oh that's one thing i wanted to mention about the winnipeg show on the weekend i forgot the box with all the exclusives so you know we had to turn away a few people there who came looking for some of the mad daddy stuff like uh dreamwalker and uh, uh, a couple other exclusives so i was such a dummy i forgot that but no i put those in there as well too i dug out so we still have uh, about you know four or five left so if anybody is a, a turtles fan or a last ronin fan especially the director's cut that we have here is really awesome um next oh i might have to move some stuff around i always forget this one is from idw and boom right um, more i love this one too i enjoyed it it was awesome yeah two two genres i don't really care for sorry ash um godzilla and power rangers um it, yeah it's it's definitely the the combination of the two is better than the singles on their own yeah yeah, IDW and Boom together, 
which is uh, always a weird like, combination nowadays when you actually see two different companies working together. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but they do work together here. You got Godzilla versus the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Uh, much like Tyler said, I, I've tried, and I, Tyler not as much, but I've really tried for almost like a year or so, if not longer, to get into them. It was well, ridiculous how many how many Power Rangers books I had to sort through. Because there was Mighty Morphin, and then there were just Power Rangers, and oh my god. But yeah, I, so I, 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 but I like this. This book is awesome. Godzilla and all his creatures and universe are all being showing up in here. Same with the Power Rangers. You got their bad guys and that showing up in here. So you just got wicked nonstop comic book action front. Like from like the whole book, basically, there's nothing really slow in this. Mm -hmm. They do fit well for a team up. It does make sense. It's not too much of a stretch because they end up fighting giant monsters anyway. Yeah, I'll give it that. Yeah, it's, it, it's a better team up than I've seen them do with like uh, Transformers and Pretty Pony. You know, yeah. and, or even like which went or Back to the Future and Transformers, which was an okay one either. But I thought that was kind of weird too. But again, too, this is a this series is written by Cullen Bunn, mm -hmm. which we we point out before is such a weird weird weird, weird our writer on here. But you got Freddie Williams the second doing the art here, and that's him on the cover art there. And uh, you no, know, his art is so awesome and cartoony like inside, but almost like in a painted way. He's done a lot of the uh, G.I. Joe covers for the last year or so. I yeah. love the B covers and some of the A covers now, too. So I like his artwork there. So I just love it. It's like super fun, cartoony comics. It, no goodness. There we go. You're adjusting my screen without unplugging it again. Oh, yeah. We, we apologize for that last week. That a little sudden. We had some technical errors. Technical, yeah. I'm the technical error. Yeah. Um, next, we've got a, a couple things from Image here. Um, first off, we've got Ghost Cage. Oh, Ghost Cage number two. Number two. Yeah, um, I really like this book. The first issue was, was pretty cool, so I thought I would check out uh, issue two um, as well. And one of the ones that Image charges a bit more for, because it is $6. Uh, yeah, because it is, uh, it, it is. Uh, I think it might be like an independent property that they they've kind of or have purchased in that, so they have to pay for a little bit more. Maybe I'm not. I'm just guessing. It is a little bit of a bigger, a uh, little bit thicker. Um, I do like it a lot. It it kind of has. Um, it, it's about like a. It has wicked like future like robot art and, and manga art put together there, so that's kind of cool. It is in black and white, so whenever you see a black and white comic, I always think that if you enjoy a black and white comic and, and like the art in it, that's because the art has been like, it, it, it stands out to you because they have to put so much extra into black and white yeah, art. And it's a bit disappointing it. because the colors they use on the front, like they have the green and that pink, plus like it just pops. And then there's the actual color of the characters, which isn't something crazy, but it, they just look really good with color. Yeah. But I mean, it, I mean, you could always color it it's like later on if they wanted to. Well, oh, same that they've done with the Walking Dead deluxe editions. Yeah, but yeah. It, it's a great book. It still is like the this evolution of robot AI. You get more secrets that are revealed in here. Uh, some of the stuff is happening is 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 not what it seemed at first. So sometimes heroes are being enemies, and sometimes enemies are seeming like they're heroes now. Uh, we find out some ideas of uh, you know enemies who are. Very surprising who they turn out to be. So they turn out to be heroes. Maybe the causes they're fighting for are not what they seem as well. Mm -hmm. You still got quite a bit of humor in here as well. It's not kind of like you know your your slapstick humor that kind of gets you know fit in there. Kind of Guardians of the Galaxy. So yeah, great. I still quite like it. Um, I'm enjoying it. But what I'm hearing like in the the comic book world and community that is this book is getting a lot of buzz. A lot of people are liking it like a lot. Like. I saw several different reviewers give this their their pick of the week, um, hmm. in, a, in a very big week. So um, something's going right for it. I'm, I'm enjoying it. It's good. Image seems to have a pretty good handle lately on on their books. Right. There's not a whole lot coming from them that's not been really good. Like our our next one here is. Oh, I've never mentioned the creative team on there. Oh yeah. So okay. the, the creative team is Nick Dragata and Caleb Goner. And Nick Dragata does the uh, writing and art, I believe. Mm -hmm. One of them does double duty. I forgot to mark which one. 
yeah, they, they have it all on there. Even with my glasses, it's a little small to see. Um, That's what she said. <laughs> sorry to hear that. Uh, next here, they've got, uh, again, Image Comics is Bloodstained Teeth. And this is one that they've been ramping up for a little bit. I don't know if it was delayed or if they've just had their, you know, their press, whatever you want to call it, marketing team going crazy on it. Because mm -hmm. I've, I've been hearing about this one for oh, quite a while. Me too. I was pumped up to read this one. Mm -hmm. uh, from Image as well, <clears throat> you got Christian Ward doing the writing and Patrick Reynolds doing the art here. Uh, first thing I will say here, is the art really surprised me and totally blew me away. Um, this book is almost like it's like tie-dye, uh -huh. psychedelic, or not psychedelic in the sense like it's all weird and trippy, but just the colors, uh, or almost like someone was painting with a, a palette made of cooling. It is unreal. And it, what, that really stands out in here because this is a vampire book. So you always think dark work or dark art, uh, the very shaded. It's, it's, it's bright. Colors. It's very bright, like I said, very, very bright work that just kind of pops. Which is a huge contrast from, uh, what was that Vampire's one? Um, we just read it the other week. Well, and that's, and that's my point exactly. This is one book amongst many vampire books mm -hmm. lately, so you really needed something to stand out, and that does do it, the artwork there. So uh, what it is, is you got Sloan, he's a, he's a firstborn vampire, and he's uh, you know, one of the higher-up elite, which are the firstborns. And Sips are, are like uh, you know, vampires who have been turned. You know, humans have been turned by vampires. And um, they're not allowed. They're forbidden unless they're like slaves or for like feasts and stuff like that. But this uh, this Sloan guy just doesn't care anymore. And he, he turns people for, for money. And he charges them. But now this is kind of getting, he's been doing it for you know, hundreds of years or whatever. And uh, he kind of gets fined out now because people nowadays know they have to, you know, document everything, right? So he does it to one girl and she like puts it on like Instagram that she's a vampire now. And his his his, his uh, um, underling tells him, oh, don't worry about it, boss. Like nobody believes that stuff anyways. Because, yeah, all the time we see, see people saying they're vampires and stuff. Who knows if they're real or not, right? Most likely not. But, uh, yes, but the elites don't like this, so no, they kind of bring him in and start torturing him and say, like, hey, man, we're either going to kill you or you have to go out there and don't kill all these people that you've sired and that. So, obviously, he chooses the, uh, <laughs> to go out and, and kill all these people, and, and that's where they leave him at the end of the first issue. He's he's gone into, uh, this, I, don't know, I forget how long it is, but now he's started this mission where he has to go and kill everybody that he's turned into a vampire, and it's a it's a neat story it's it's neat in the sense that he's got to go and they take care of all the people that he wiped out or still get killed by these higher ups and also like i said the art the art here just really uh you know gives you a a, a nice nice visual you know um imagery and nice visual who's uh, who's the creative team you know, here who, who's the creative team here i want to hear you pronounce uh one of their one of their names uh, this one is, I told you, it's Christian Ward and mm -hmm. Patrick Reynolds. Yeah, but who else? There's Heather Moore and one other person there. Oh, I, did, I can't see that, sorry. Uh, it's it's like Hassan Otsman El Hale, or El Hau. I didn't see that. He probably does lettering or something, so I didn't have that, sorry. Yeah, I, I was looking at that, and I'm thinking, oh, I hope he talks about that. I hope he says that name. No, and I somehow you probably would have gotten it right, but saying, you know, Christian Ward, you just tongues in a knot. <laughs> I, I practice all the names when I write them out now, so it's not too bad. Um, next up from one of our favorites here from Aftershock. Um, this is one that they've been showing off for a long time as well. And that's uh, Naughty List. Yeah, this one was awesome. I was. Uh, they've they've been having this one shown off for what oh, feels like forever they've definitely been talking about it since christmas or mm -hmm. thanksgiving ish uh on this one here you got nick santoro do the writing and that's an interesting choice here because he's done uh writing for uh the sopranos and, mm -hmm. uh, and a few other shows in that uh you know that that's definitely one that stands out and then you have uh lee ferguson doing the art and the on the cover there, you got uh, Frank Avelli doing a, a cover art there, and I like Frank Avelli. You know, a lot of his art is known for the creepy, spooky stuff. Tyler liked that one, that Buffy one he did a few weeks ago. Yep. Um, but this one, him just doing normal stuff, and I still quite enjoy it. 
what this is here, it is it's kind of neat. It's a, the original retelling of Santa Claus, but it's a little darker kind of retelling, and it's seen from a different angle. It's it's kind of seen that uh, Chris Kringle here, or whatever you want to call him, is seen, or Saint Nicholas is. I don't know he he is Santa Claus, but he doesn't see it as a good thing. He sees it as a curse. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one day he he lives in this town where there's lots of kids that are. Um, Know, suffering from poor and disease and that because of a uh, you know, famine <laughs> and, 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 and from poor. But whatever, yeah. you know, it just because of what was going on back then, the plague and that. So he goes, he's outside one night, he just wishes he could do something. And you know, this star and he sees a star and he wakes up the next morning and the star is granted him like these you known powers, it seems like. And all he wants to do is make toys. So he gives up his life to make these toys to to give to these kids. And he does this for a little while. And then it starts going on from there. He starts getting you know, the word starts getting out. He starts getting letters. He starts making more toys. He ends up getting um, uh, you know little people to help him out. You know that ends up becoming like the the elves, but they're not really elves. You know he ends up getting like the flying uh, caribou or the reindeer. You know because the star you know the star keeps providing all this stuff, and all this guy wants to do is stop it. He hates it. You know because all that happens is. He hears all about his children's suffering. He hears about, you know, the naughty and niceless all gone stuff. Yeah. So, and he kind of turns into a dick a little while. He gets kind of pissed off as it comes towards modern times. You see kids that, you know, he's busting his hump and doing everything possible to make gifts. And, you know, bratty kids are getting gifts. So he starts doing things like, you know, instead of giving kids coal, he then takes a dump in their box, you know, in a, in a box and gives it to them. So then he gets kind of reprimanded from that by the stars. So he gets the naughty and nice list. So one day he wakes up and the naughty and nice list machine is gone. Someone has stolen it. So uh, now uh, all, everybody that's on the, the naughty list is getting killed. Like someone's wiping them out. He's seeing it on these news well, stories. Well, I was going to so say it's Leonardo DiCaprio from Catch Me If You Can, but he doesn't yeah. kill anybody. <laughs> yeah, true. So now he's, uh, he, you know, he turns into like this, you know, kick-ass version of Santa with a shotgun. And he's going to go out and find out who's doing all this. And he was a good version of Santa and kick-ass version is uh, Russell Crowe in those yeah, Netflix yeah, movies. It's really enjoyable. I quite like this. It's, it's quite... It's weird that it didn't come out at Christmas time because this would have been awesome at Christmas. So uh, I don't. There was still so many time. Halloween books coming out at Christmas. There just wasn't room. Maybe because of that, I don't know. But hopefully they'll have a, a sequel in time for this Christmas again because I really enjoyed this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, Dave. I, I, Dave says he gave up because of the delay. Um, I mean, yeah, uh, lots of people. The same thing with that uh, last Ronin Turtles there. And I'm sure there's other stuff on our list that's been pushed back. Um, sure. it, it's just such a common thing. And especially in the case of this, which is, feels like it's been almost six months since it was announced. And Turtles, you know, a few months. It does kill the hype and it, stuff like that. It, it, well, that exactly happens. And it, it hurts the reader. It hurts the publisher. It hurts everybody. Well, that's one thing that's nice about this show. We covered it and we really enjoyed it. And I say that we, uh, you should pick it up, Dave. I think you'd really like it. There we go. Um, this next one, I always think I have a logo for Behemoth and I don't. I don't know why I don't because we cover so many. Which one is that? Uh, that's Vermilion. Oh, Behemoth. Behemoth, yeah. This one is my pick of the week, cover-wise. I know. Oh, it's, it's on there. Don't worry. It's a little risque. It's uh, what? It's awesome because it's just a. Uh, if this was art. if this was another company, there would be blind bag editions and. Um. Yeah, maybe it's pretty. It's pretty risque. This one. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's cool because it has like that negative black art, uh, or black and red kind of negative art to it. Mm -hmm. I love the splatter effect. I always love splatter effect on stuff, even if it's just minute like that. This happens. That kind of splatter effect happens in this book a little bit too. And uh, I, I like sexy chicks. That's a pretty sexy looking chick. So. <laughs> This book here is uh, from Brow. She got she got some weird ribs, though. I don't know. Weird ribs. Um, Pretty angular in there. It looks like she's a little bit uh, not healthy. 
She's dead. Well, she likes to party. That's true. <laughs> um, it, it, it's, it, I just have a bunch of words to describe it. It's weird. It's erotic. It's like it, it's shot or done in point of view, point of view style, like almost like porno style, like POV style. Very, very scratchy art, like you see on the cover there. Um, adult, very, very adult content in here. Uh, well, it even has them. parental advisory oh, on well, it. Oh, you have to. There's oh, like yeah. nudity and sex and you know, very explicit content in here. Um, and, you know, it ends up being very horrific at the end, too. So what it is, is you, you see this sexy girl here. She's uh, in a bar and she's just partying in that. And you see her. You see her through a guy's eyes or a person's eyes and they're talking and partying and they end up going back to her place, doing some more partying. Uh, they end up kind of hooking up in that. And while they're hooking up in that, the, the person who you see like through their eyes, you see their hands, you know, they kind of kill her and they kind of rip her up into pieces almost. She's like paper. And then it starts turning even weirder than that. It ends up she's doing that. And then at the end, it ends up that she had like a giant little kind of, uh, monster bug beetle type thing or, or cat that uh, crawls out of her mouth so kind of a weird ice and cream man type of thing going on um but yeah just very very neat artistic style you know erotic style um weird horrific ending so i quite enjoyed it i don't know what if this was just what it is is from i'm reading inside here they have a, a letter from the artist bravo there it just seemed like he's a, a very artistic guy artist and he had this idea in his head that he wanted to turn into a story so he kind of did that type of thing. So it's kind of like a visual, uh, a visual um, story told in long parts, or a painting told in long parts mm -hmm. type of thing. So very neat, artistic wise. Um. Well, that that was your cover of the week. You said right. Yes. Okay. Well, we have one more book after this, and not one that you read. But I'll go over my cover. My I think my truest cover of the week, just because mm -hmm. it completes the set. Um, and it's not in. an we we did the first issue. I don't remember if we did the second. It's not a great series. I haven't read the rest from where we'd left off. Um, but that's last session, and it's number five. And it's just I love these character sheet covers. This yes, one's got sure. like the the Lich uh, Undying Lord on it. But it it's nice to have the complete set because they all actually, despite the story inside not being exactly what I thought it was initially, um, really nice, really nice covers on all of them. Did you see that post that Mike Ruth had this week where someone sent him a book? Where I did, did. And that's another one I pulled. Not that exact one. Um, but I, I like all of those D&D &D character sheets ones. And like I like this Meeseeks one. Yeah. From uh, the Dungeons and Dragons. And uh, that one that Mike did, I thought that was an actual cover. I was scrolling so quick. And uh, whoever did that for him. Yeah, I think someone sent that to Mike. They did it. Someone sent it to him, yeah. Yeah. Uh, whoever did that for him just it got the art like spot on yeah, it looks like it like it looks like it's it's printed it's amazing that one if you haven't checked that out it's on mike's page um wicked wicked art on that um anyway yeah i want to show that cover off because that one's my cover of the week just because i like the having the set i think it'd sure. be cool in a, a gaming room have all those character sheet type you know, strewing about. What do you uh, want to go into now? You want to do some? You want to do a little well, mail? I've talk? I've got one more book here. Oh yeah, that's right. You said that. Sorry. Yeah. Um, you didn't read this one because you didn't particularly like the first one. But um, <laughs> as we are a review show, and we always say, you know, we'll cover at least two of them. I I enjoyed the first one, so I went over this, and I I think you should take another look at it. I plan to. I just didn't have a chance yet. Um, but that's that's the second issue of We Have Demons, and you know Scott Snyder working on it, Greg Capullo. Um, uh, the reason it's structured so weird, and I figured it out with this one, and it, we had an idea as to why. But it was a comicsology book, so it was coming out in stages. That's why each book has uh, six chapters, eight chapters, something like that. Um, it's broken into parts, and that's why they do feel like multiple stories all in one. And this one's this, good. This Dark Horse putting it out in a collected form, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's Dark Horse putting them out, uh, which is weird. I would have thought that by now, Comixology could just release things. I'm surprised they don't have their own it's publisher, probably, but maybe they have a, an agreement because it's not the first time that Comixology has released stuff. 
it, it's probably just cheaper for them to hire someone to do it because comiXology that's owned by amazon it is yeah that's yeah and most people that get their digital comics go through comiXology now well that's what it is yeah um, but yeah, we have demons too. Uh, we left off and she had found out about, uh, you know, her father who was a p- priest or a pastor or whatever. Um, he was a part of this group called, uh, Halo, I believe. And, uh, they, they were monster hunters. They were demon hunters. And you find out a little bit more about what these demons are in this. And the character here we see on the cover there, um, uh, the, the, the lady there, that's, that's Lamb, that's, uh, his daughter, and then the other guys, the demon that we're introduced to, uh, his name's Gus, and he's actually not a demon. He's someone that was infected by what they call the horn. And we actually, in one of the chapters, get a whole breakdown of who he is, and he's he's from like an older society, not quite cavemen, seems kind of ice agey, but definitely says he's probably the oldest being on the planet. Like Vandal Savage. Yeah. And you find out that the little circlet he wears isn't just a part of it. It's actually what keeps this, uh, you know, infection at bay, his possession at bay. And it comes off at one point and he just turns on them. And it, it's really interesting. And then uh, the book ends off, you know, the final chapter shows us is uh, she's she's looking at her, her father. I, do, I don't remember if it's a funeral or what, but... Uh, they see his body in the casket, and it ends with him coming back to life, um, but possessed by a demon. Yeah, I'll probably, I'll probably check it out again. I just haven't had time. It's been, there's so much stuff to read lately, so many good mm-hmm. things that, like, even stuff that I don't cover, I'm still trying to read as well, too, because yeah. we've just either started to cover it before or just stuff I, I want to read. But I have it. I, I know I have my number one, you have number two. I'll definitely mm-hmm. catch up on it again. Yeah, and you, you find out some interesting stuff. I love stuff. art. I mean, Capillo, I love his yeah. art. And I usually do like Scott Snyder. So It's very Scott Snyder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then you can just find out how actually, how closely tied that this Gus and Lamb are. He's been there. He's seen her her, her whole life. And uh, you do find out some interesting connections from her past. Yeah. Uh, and, and his past and how they're linked together. But yeah, yeah. Um, Good book, that one. Um, definitely give it another try. Um, yeah, stuff to go through yet. We do have some stuff. We've got Moon Knight to talk about quick. And it's a, lots of lots of character building, lots of origin stories. And that's about it, really. Yeah, that's about it. Cool to see Moon Knight's origin in this. Um, Oscar Isaac, he's, he's fantastic. Yeah, I saw someone post somewhere. Actually, I think it was Mikey Sutton was saying there that uh no Oscar Oscar Isaac should be nominated for an Emmy. Oh. And, and uh yeah, I mean after seeing this episode, mm-hmm. like I, we've mentioned it in the past, like not just the what the character he's acting as, but for most of this most of the scenes in the show, it's just him by himself mm-hmm. or him with himself. So but I mean, him that, in anything has been good. Even in X Men Apocalypse, yeah. hey, a little bit goofy, a little bit campy, but I thought he did a good apocalypse. Yeah. Um, in Star up, Wars, but... he was one of the better new characters, uh, and the Poe Dameron comic was actually not bad as well. Yeah, um, and he's been good. But this was episode five, and there's only one episode left. I don't know what they're gonna do. Uh, it's been they've, amazing, they've been in this weird ethereal world, you know, the Duat, for uh, oh, about two episodes ish now. Um, yeah. And but now Mark knows who he is. He's kind of turns. It seems like his split personalities are not split anymore. So we'll see. But we can't talk about too much more because that wrecks it. Yeah. And there's we got so much more to cover yet too. So to be yeah. long episode today. Uh, Netflix started today, or not Netflix started today, but today on Netflix started for the, for those uh, people that are still subscribed. That's true. Uh, the Osagi Yojimbo animated series started today. So um, I forgot about that until I saw it was announced today. So I'm kind of surprised we didn't see any more hype up to that before because, yeah, they need some hype right now on Netflix. So. I, I don't know what Netflix is doing. They don't have a whole lot to, like press-wise going on. I think they're staying a little bit quiet. Well, they, they need to you know, hype up the uh, Usagi agenda because that would make people watch some stuff. So I'll start watching that. So we'll cover that a little bit later on. Uh, yeah, I mean, my Netflix subscription ends sometime this week, if not today. Oh, okay. 
Uh, Margot Robbie is going to be uh, Barbie in a live action Barbie movie. I saw that. So HBO Max uh, animated is going to have a Kite Man uh, spin off, or not Kite Man. Yeah, Kite Man mm-hmm. shows spin off from Harley Quinn the animated. Which I still wish would come to streaming in Canada. I've seen all the episodes. You can get them on DVD, but I wish you could stream them here because I'd like to watch it again. It's a That's great good. show. Because I haven't seen that yet either. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got Tales of the Jedi uh, animated series announced. It's mm-hmm. going to be an anthology series, so we need to see what they put in there. They could have. It, all it'll probably be like that Star Wars Visions, except not anime. Uh, who knows? I'm not too sure. Uh, the Robotech movie has hired a director. It's going to be the director that did the Hawkeye stuff. So yeah. that's kind of cool. I forget his name. I think it's Ra- uh, Roz Ayers. I, I, I don't remember. Uh, in the latest uh, Doctor Strange trailer, which comes out next week, the movie. We've got uh, our tickets. Yeah, we do. Baron Mardo confirms uh, the Illuminati. Yeah, and we see the... Uh, we see a lot. We see Captain Carter in there as a live-action Captain Carter, which mm-hmm. did confirm mm-hmm. is going to be a live-action Captain Carter with stuff now with Haley Atwell. Which is he great. Haley he- Atwell, I... She's one of the best parts of all those Captain America movies. Even as an old lady, she's just she's an awesome character. I don't know how that, I don't know how they'll make her look bigger, but whatever. And then uh, she's, she's um, not got, huge, but she's pretty built. And there you see Professor X in a yellow wheelchair hovercraft thing. So that's yeah. kind of cool. Gotta love the '90s hover chair. Yeah, uh, they announced yesterday. I think it was, or maybe on when Tuesday it was. You got a rapper and part-time WWE wrestler. Uh, Bad Bunny is going to be uh, in a El Morto. movie, El Morto, where he's like a wrestling guy with a magic uh, luchador mask. So, I don't know. We'll see. That's kind of silly. Yeah. Uh, that's all the rapid stuff I have. It wouldn't be silly if they were just doing that. It's silly that it's tied to Spider-Man. Well, it's because it showed up. He first showed up in a Spidey, some Spidey comic. But, yeah, yeah so that's some of the rapid news stuff. We kind of mentioned some of the earlier stuff. Um, I got a quick mail call stuff that we got just a couple of things in the mail yesterday. I know I posted some of the stuff online, but mm-hmm. uh, Kelly Williams, who was always part of the uh, tag stuff, is mm. uh, we finally got this uh, leather face. Leather face. That was from, quite, from one of the horror nights they had quite a while ago. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of cool. And then I got a few things here from uh, our cover artist, Michael Berglund, which will nicely segue into some of the Spectro stuff. So, again, from one of the tag shows, I got this. Oh, uh, yes. The Shang-Chi, Shang-Chi version of Gumby. So, we got the Master Gumby of Gum Fu. Master of Gum Fu. I thought that was pretty hilarious. I decided that. And uh, somebody had uh, asked Michael to do a commission of this and then kind of backed out. So, um, I ended up you know, winning it on a auction so a mm. valiant unit unit v1 mm-hmm. so that's cool this is nice art and then uh yeah tyler said i, I had to win this or there was going to be like the end of the world so a really cool uh michael their cover of x-files mm-hmm. and it was all a white cover and that's all the black did so it kind of almost looks like a photocopy so that's kind of cool too so yeah that came in this week and I see behind you, you've got more of your Dan Parent stuff up on the wall there. Yes, some of the other stuff came up also. The original two were there, and then the two new ones have come in, which is the... Um, Jughead and Josie. Jughead and Josie, yeah. And the coasters I have up in the other room. So I haven't talked to Dean from Peg City uh, comic set, because he was out in Calgary. And I uh, know he's, he's, he he's been pretty Calgary busy. He's day. had lots of stuff come in since he got back. Yeah, so I haven't talked to him yet, so I'm not sure if he was able to get anything or not signed for me or not. I hope he did, so we'll see you there. But yeah, we got some grads to everybody who was out there. Sounds like Calgary was a pretty good show. Yeah, I've heard uh, nothing but good things, except yeah. from... Uh, uh, oh, there's some Rob Liefeld. Right? Liefeld, yeah. Which wasn't even Who wasn't there. even there. Uh, and we were talking about Michael, our cover artist there, so yeah, we'll, we'll jump back into you know, Spectrum. It's on the screen. It's on the screen. Oh, is it? Yeah. And it looks better than that. I know. This is, <laughs> we, this is the ghost version. It came to me in a dream. Uh, yeah, so Spectro books, we still have those on um, pre-sale. So you can get the Virgin only in a set. Mm-hmm. The uh, trade one is, is quite nice as well. Both are awesome. 
the the trade one the you know, trade one I, I think kind of plays into the scene a little bit where it almost looks like the spec show is kind of you know, they're almost holding it up as part of it too mm-hmm. but it's it's cool um great book by wando it, it's going to have some you know, horror sci-fi anthology uh feel to it or not it is that's not what it's going to feel like it is going to be that <laughs> um yeah, check it out we have we, um, we did stuff. see our final cover work just we need to submit it for approval for, uh, for, for our other new book that we haven't talked about yet uh, also from michael that one that looks be. great that would be a totally different style oh, different, a totally different vibe yeah but yeah so everybody who's a friend of the channel or uh you know just want, want something new horror style horror scientific or sci-fi style uh, again, this book does come in that larger format. So if you haven't tried that kind of style format out, give it a try. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is very limited. Um, only 300 copies made in total, 100 being virgin. So there, there will not be a lot of these books out there. Nope. And I don't think, like I've never really seen too many yet, but there's not too many uh, different covers for these larger books. That I come keep out. checking, hoping to see others, and I haven't seen any others yet show up on uh, League of Geeks. I've seen cover A, the 1 in 10, or 1 in 15, I think it's a 1 in 10, and uh, ours. So yeah. we have just as many as Aftershock themselves. Yeah, so we're pretty happy about that. And we have also uh, got our fingers in the water or our feelers in the air, whatever you want to call it, that uh, we're, we're in the works of trying to get a uh, long dough. And maybe a little uh, segment with him as well too. Apparently, he lives uh, only half his time here, or half his time in the states, type of thing, and the other half is in, in Japan. Apparently, we found out. So um, we'll see what happens there. Hopefully, we can get him on because uh, this this story he does the writing and the art and the interior work. So mm-hmm. I'm I'm super pumped about this. I hope everyone else is too. Michael did awesome work, and uh, I, I'm going to try to make myself a little make us a little commercial somehow this weekend for it. Uh, It'll pop up and they will make a fool of myself, which I've done so much in the past, but everybody seems to like, so we'll see. You're going to shave your head, make yourself look like the screaming guy in the front? Or are you going to paint your face again, make yourself look like Spectro? I was going to maybe paint my face and make make myself look like I'm sure we've got a bucket around. We can, you know, cut the hand out, give yourself a skull. Yeah, we'll see what we can do. But I think that's it. Oh, like I said, if anybody is interested in that, no, the, the whole last Ronin hype that's now going on, we still have some of those left. And uh, yeah, anybody else, just check out our website. We're going to be updating the website pretty soon because we do have some new stuff to go on there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah I have the item made. I just I haven't put it up on the website yet. The, the website was giving me some issues. I was actually working on it earlier. Yeah, I want. I always like having our pre-sale stuff up early on uh, you know, the Facebook groups. So like those people to benefit first, and then a lot of the times, by the time we end up getting them into a uh, sale, there's not enough copies to go up on the website. It's just enough to get hang on to as well too. Like that's what happened with Dreamwalker and some of the other stuff. So um, again, we appreciate everybody who supports us. It's uh, four sixteen and counting now. I saw so. It's awesome because a lot of our supporters are our fellow creators, whether it's fellow YouTube creators or fellow comic book creators, uh, artists, artists, writers. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, keep our fingers crossed. We we hope to bring you as much uh, new and different, um, you know, comic content as possible. And hopefully too, you'll be going to want to check out the the things we're getting dice these teams too. We'll see how we can kind of do some some cross promotions there. It's, it's all for fun, of course. So. Anything yeah, that'll that'll be interesting because you're using uh, Roll Twenty, right? The Roll Twenty. Uh, uh, I don't know if it's yeah, not program, that, but website. Yeah, and that's something that I'll have to get maybe you to look into with me because uh, we're going to be learning that. So um, maybe that's something we can do Saturday night since there's no tag show this week. Maybe we can figure that out ourselves because we got I got a game all ready to go. I just got to figure it, put it on the site for because I think there's going to be about five or four or five people playing plus myself and. Apparently, this can have like animation and, and, and all the important maps and that. So it'll be pretty neat. I'm quite excited, but at the same time, too. Stefan's a, he's a wizard. Yeah, was we'll he? Not a technical wizard, that's for sure. <laughs> well, Stefan is. Yeah, Stefan, for sure. Yeah. All right, that's it. I can keep talking, but I don't think we should. So. No, I'm tired of hearing your voice. I'm ready to go for a bit. Right. <laughs> we'll uh, see everybody 
next week. Actually, no, next week uh, is oh, Doctor yeah. Strange. We might do it early. We might do it late. We might do it the day after. It depends because I also yeah. get my new school schedule next week, and I don't know what it is 100% yet. We, we got a note from our doctor that says we'll miss next week's show, and the, the note from our doctor is from Doctor Strange. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, we'll be we'll have a show. It might be just a little different time than normal. Well, definitely will be because we'll be at the movie theater doing shows. Cool. Alrighty. See y'all. Peace out, little boys.